throughout the 2012 season, we were granted exclusive behind the scenes access to the TT Legends racing team as they took on some of the toughest bike races in the world. For seven races, from Suzuka in Japan to Oscherschleben in Germany, from Le Mans to the legendary Isle of Man, we followed these ordinary men doing extraordinary things. John McGuinness is the Morecambe Missile, ex-Bricky and muscle picker. He's won the Isle of Man TT 17 times. Simon Andrews is the fearless young gun and a proven winner. Fighting back from injury, it's his first season in endurance racing. And Cameron Donald, Australia's fastest plumber and two-time winner at the Isle of Man. These are the TT legends. Looking in from the outside, it just looks ridiculous. You know, it just looks insane. What are you doing that for? Blah, blah, blah. But when you're on the bike, it doesn't feel that way. You just, you're just riding around, doing your thing. The older generation above me, you know, they all talked about the TT. It was like the holy grail to them. None of them ever came here. The TT was everything that I grew up hearing. So for me to be able to come and ride that same course was something very special. It's nearly 200 mile an hour on a superbike through streets. You know, you don't do that on the race circuits. The TT is the best place to ride a motorbike in the world. It's what motorbikes were invented for. There's nothing more to be said. The history of the place, it's just unique. It's the greatest motorsports event on earth, and once you come, you can't help but come back every year. You know, what these guys are doing, you know, I feel like a, a racer, you know? These guys are warriors. When you win a World Superbike race, the average speed is about 100 miles an hour. So the average speed when you win a TT is now around 130 miles an hour. The slow corners, the fast corners, it's enormous fast straights. Places like the bottom of Bray Hill are quite honestly frightening. John McGuinness was clocked just over 190 there last year. The speed, the excitement, the thrills, the, the stories, the, uh, you know, the, just ev everything about it, you know, it's a, it's a special track. It's TT week, and the team tried to live up to their name. These are the races that define them. The TT has been held on the Isle of Man for 105 years. It's split over two weeks, with the first for practice and the second for racing. Over seven dramatic races, the riders fight to become the next TT legend. This immense course is 37 and three quarter miles long, covering mountainous roads, high streets and country lanes. Some consider this the most dangerous motorbike race in the world, whilst the riders see it as the ultimate test of nerve and skill. John's the boy, he's the guy in the 130s. He always, he always has been, you know, and if I can get close to him, that's great. So I've been spending a bit of time with Simon, we've had a couple of days, but uh, he's going good. I mean, you know, he's just so inexperienced to what, to what I am. You know, I'm 16 years ahead of him, which is a lifetime. You've got John, you've got Cameron on a good day. He's, he's going fast at the moment. Obviously, Guy Martin's the next person. I think I have got the best bike then, I've got the best seat, but we've just, we've got a few things that's letting us down. Um, but that's what it's all about. You take the rough with the smooth, don't you? Simon's been good all week. I bump into him a bit and he's up to talk and he's keen, but I mean, it's only his second TT, so he's got uh, nothing to lose and everything to gain, so he's quite relaxed and, and we've had some good banter and good chats, you know? We hang out together when we're doing the World Endurance and then we come here and we are all separate, but we it's like a little secret handshake or a wink. You know, we're all here together and we know that we're all part of the same collective. The last day or two, we've passed John a couple of times, said hello, but definitely didn't say as much as uh, we were saying to each other at Baldor. So it's funny, he's gone a bit quiet on me. But, um, you know, that's understandable, that's racing. I'm feeling extremely relaxed this year. Cameron's strong, the, the real strong. So I'm not worried about him, I just, you know, I'm going at number one. I can't do any more than what I'm doing. I can only go as fast as I can. They beat me, they beat me. I'll shake their hands, it's no problem. 
when the visor is down, you're focused on what you need to do. And, you know, it's a time trial. It's us against the course here. It's the first day of practice. And after much hype, it's the chance for the riders to show what they're worth and suss out the competition. Probably train harder now than you do in the race. But in the race, you're more relaxed. And when you relax around here, the lap times come. But, uh, you know, it's like we're racers. You know, we all want to be the fastest in practice. I never say it's my year. I never say it's my turn. I, I wouldn't say that, the Isle of Man. All I do is I, I, I give it 100%. In every class, and wherever that puts me, I've got to be happy. I've got to relax more on the superbike and let it do what it wants to do underneath me rather than hold it on for grim, grim life. With variable weather conditions and due to the huge amount of time and effort it takes to close the roads, practice is limited ratcheting up the pressure for the riders. 17 times winner John seems to be struggling. It wasn't ideal conditions for us, really. It's, uh, it was a bit patchy out there from the rain earlier and it doesn't, doesn't dry under the trees, so it's not the best conditions for John, really. He's not prepared to push it, certainly not in practice anyway, and, and other guys are, so it wasn't a great night for us. He feels a bit slightly deflated, really, because because he's not able to push it. He wants to be on top, you know, he wants to be P1, and then uh, it gives him the confidence and also for the other riders to look and think, you know, he's the man to beat. But Cameron is upbeat. The hands aren't blistered yet, my body's not very sore, I haven't been to see the physio, and I just, I feel good, and I know that's because of the long hours I've put in doing the, doing the endurance testing and racing, so it's definitely paying dividends here. John's week isn't going according to plan. His lap times aren't as good as he'd hoped, but he still remains the man to beat, and everyone wants a piece of him. For the king of the mountain, it's proving quite a distraction. I've got my schedule on my iPhone, right? So I'm just going to be there. I'm just everybody's for two weeks. You're just my Yeah. <laughs> It's a shame I've seen John a few times this week and I think the pressure's starting to build on him. He's not quite as chirpy as he was earlier. I guess it's just that, the pressure. I mean, he's under a pressure I couldn't even comprehend. John is also king of the paddock with the biggest motorhome. But the competitive gene burns bright in every motorcycle racer. Welcome to my crib. More the merrier. Come on in, guys. This is relaxation at its best. This is where I like to meditate before I go out down Bray Hill. It's a nice thing to have, you know. I don't, I don't spend my money on flash clothes and flash this and flash that. I just like my, my flash motorhomes and my home comforts. This is, is uh, quite nice. My mum bought me a cushion. Doesn't really go with anything. It gets a bit complicated, you know. There's a USB lead in there. You can play your iPod music, whatever they call it, you know. I'm not technophobic. We've got nice carpets, hand-woven by children over in the Philippines. It's uh, really expensive. More more expensive than John's. We've got the fridge. You can have a look in there, that's interesting. That's, that's a John McGuinness racing diet fridge, that. That consists of wieners, sausages. Oh, we have got a bit of pasta in there, so that's all right. I feel like a bit of a racer. Filtered water, mouldy milk, some cider, that's for the Jubilee. Can't wait for that. Plenty of kids' stuff, chocolates and sausage rolls. Tofu, original tofu, so I can blend and cook it myself. Filet de bois. Steak, Got some chicken, Got a couple of snack bars. Those are awesome. Some yogurt and some baby spinach. Definitely before I go out for a race, I'm in there two or three times. I always have a little ritual in there, I just have a little pray to my mates who are not, not here anymore. Some of my mates that have been killed over here at the TT. I always say, you know, I'm not a holy person or whatever, but uh, I always ask them to look after me. Might help, it might not. This is quite nice, you don't notice this. That's when you need that private time. You know what I'm talking about. After I won the 2009 Formula One race uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I got a bit excited and said to the missus, I said, you better get yourself in that bedroom, love. And uh, that's how Maisie was conceived. <laughs> that's how the latest edition arrived.
after last night and the dodgy conditions for John just to get a bit of confidence back. It's a great evening for it, so hopefully he can get down there, no traffic, get his head down and, uh, and do a good lap. Which... Feeling reasonably comfortable, so you know, no matter what you do, tomorrow will be what it'll be, so we'll see how we go. No point risking it tonight, we'll risk, risk it tomorrow in the race, you know. We're risking it for something then. This weekend, John, as usual, pulls it out of the bag and grabs number one spot in qualifying. Cameron comes third and Simon a very impressive ninth. The Isle of Man boasts a special hyperbaric oxygen chamber that speeds up recovery from injury. While Simon's based there for the TT, he visits twice a day as he tries to overcome his serious leg injury. This is the hyperbaric chamber. This is my little secret weapon that keeps me functioning. We come here, get pure oxygen and perhaps heal the body. The plan is to use this now until pretty much the end of the TT and see if we can get a good stage further forward with the leg. As the week progresses, there's more and more riders in there, so we're starting to get a bit of a collection as we're going through, but, you know, at least I'm not hurting like these guys are. Simon's phenomenal. What he's doing so soon, it's making me nervous, to be honest, because I just think, man, like, you must be riding with some commitment. Got the utmost respect for Simon, and, and never, yeah, I never thought two thoughts about him before we were teammates. But since then, I really thought what he's going through and with his injuries, for him to be doing what he's doing is some serious respect there. Racing's such a drug, you can't just turn your back on it, never walk away. And it's just made me appreciate things more. And I really see him as a, as a big, big name in the future, but with so little experience riding that fast, it, it must be taking a frightening amount of commitment. I'm lucky enough to earn enough money out of it to make a living and uh, be here. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Oh, I mean, Simon's leg, it just looks like a bloody shark's been chewing on it for a week or two. <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? Looks like Hannibal Lecter's been chewing on it for an hour or two. <laughs> just what about your leg? Looks like a foot long kebab. Is that it? Like oh. a foot long donut kebab. Like a pork joint in my freezer at all. Or a pork joint. Get some crackling on it. <laughs> Coming up in part two Can Cameron beat the Morecambe missile? And is it the end of the road for Simon? Well, the bike went 40 yards, and Simon went 40, 40 yards. yards at least. <laughs> Race day has finally arrived. The weather has cleared and the first superbike race is ready to go. Celebrities, sporting heroes and speed freaks flock to the paddock, showing the TT's global appeal. Formula One driver Mark Webber, a good friend to John, has turned up for moral support. Oh, it's a special event, I think. Uh, I've known John pretty well, so uh, it's good to see him do well, but obviously you want the Aussies to do well as well. So, uh, you know, Cameron's riding well. I think I'll be between him and John today. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so just for them to both have a safe race. You know, there's certain sports that you just leave to the good guys, and, uh, you know, this is one of them. The Alaman TT, you get up in the morning, make sure everything's prepared, uh, helmets, boots, leathers, and so on. Uh, have a quick word with the team to make sure everything's right, and then you have to walk from probably where your motor is in the bottom of the paddock up to the main road, throw your leg over the bike and have to be on lap record pace instantly to get on the podium. It's crazy. Here we go then, less than 45 seconds remaining before the start of racing at TT 2012 and looking down from our position here, high above Glen Crutchery Road, I can see the first few machines making their way down towards the starting gate and there is the number one machine of John McGuinness, El Championé himself, 17 wins here around the mountain course. John McGuinness crouched over the number machine, goes racing! And the front wheel lifts off the tarmac, and there goes John McInnes, away down Glen Country Road and under the footbridge. That is poetry in motion. That is the race favourite. That is the fastest man in practice. Next off in a day glow green helmet this year is Cameron Donald. Cameron has looked in fine form on the Wilson Craig Racing Honda. Keep an eye on this man. This is number 17, Simon Andrews, 27 years of age, made a fantastic impression on his debut here last year with a lap of 125 miles an hour. 
and McGuinness is back in front. Um, Cameron Donald led by a fifth of a second at the grandstand, but here at Glen Helen, John McGuinness has reversed it. He now leads Cameron Donald by a fifth of a second. Oh, look, I've wanted to come all my life and had a, a few mates that have managed to get over here over the years and driven me mad with jealousy with the story. So uh, I was in London shooting a film and had a few days off thanks to the Queen and just jumped on and uh, got in. So I'm very happy. It's unbelievable. I'm just sitting in someone's front yard, Bray Hill, and I think the first three bikes came through. I was speechless. He's superbike TT then, and John McGuinness has got a real fight on his hands. Cameron Donald, the leader at the bungalow, and the top three on the road already past Cronk Nimona, and Cameron Donald remains in the lead on corrected time. I've been told that Simon Andrews is off at Graham's up on the mountain. Simon Andrews is off, but is conscious at Graham's up on the mountain. All we can tell you at the moment is that Simon crashed on the first lap of the Superbike race. He's been airlifted to hospital. We haven't got any more information at the moment. We do know he was conscious, so we'll just keep you up to date. To move on Morgan, but over to Glen Helen. Just one second separating the top three at the grandstand. We're in for a cracking race this afternoon. Sound as the first machine comes in to complete lap two. It is John McGuinness, rider number one, and the race leader down to Chris Kinley. He's in Charlie. I think that'll be a pretty quick lap as well. Cameron is pushing them all the way. What was it at Croc the moment? It was 1.4 seconds the lead. The new rear tie going in, the fuel going in. Cameron goes past the stair so, now. Interesting to know what the lap times are there, Charlie, because the first laps are pretty quick from a standard start, wouldn't they? Again, it's pretty much the same at 130.307, okay. Cameron 130.172, and Guy 100.06. So, will McGuinness still lead Donald at Ramsey? Over to Roy Moore. Lap number three and only four seconds in it, so still all to play go. John didn't even get onto the podium at all. Here is the chequered flag, here is the magician of the mountain wheeling over the line. It is John McGuinness who takes his 18th TT victory and closes a little bit more on Joey Dunlop's amazing record of 26. John crosses the line with 14 seconds to spare, making it win number 18 for the King of the Mountain. So ecstatic, I can't put it into words how I feel at the moment. I don't know where he gets it from, I don't know how or how long it's going to carry on, but hopefully it carries on for as long as he wants it to. Well, the race went to plan, really. I mean, funnily enough, I predicted the race result before it started. I said the race result was going to be John McGuinness from Cameron Donald from Bruce Anderson. It was. I know you need a bit of luck to get that. He's a master around this place, and uh, i got to respect that. But, you know, I made him work for it in the first few laps anyway, which was a start. We'll see if we can make him work for it like that at the end of the race on Friday. But good start. I'm, I'm proud of my second place. To compete in a TT, to finish a TT is incredible. To win one's amazing. To win 18, I just, I don't know. I've never enjoyed it as much. I set off at number one, uh, there was clear road, it was just me that stopped watching the pit boards and, and for six laps in front of me, you know, I wasn't anybody going to trip me up, so I just got stuck in from the start. With the champagne flowing, John finds time to celebrate with his mate Mark. I really like the man, you know, he's really enthusiastic about everything, you know, speedway, motocross, TT and everything. I went to Valencia with him to the last MotoGP race. Flew in a private jet with Adrian Newey and uh, Jason Crump, the World Speedway champion. So for me, I was like, I was well out of my depth, you know. So I said, should we get? I said, should we to look at some flights, maybe, uh, maybe EasyJet or something. He said, oh, don't worry about that. I'll sort that. So I was really nervous before the race and pinged him a text message to say I was nervous, and he sent me a real nice, inspirational text message that I really thought about before the race, and it helped, definitely helped me. So uh, good guy. Now the race is over. Attention turns to Simon, who crashed out of the first lap. Can I just say get well soon to my uh, teammate, Simon Andrews? I believe he's stepped off somewhere and uh, hope there is a speedy recovery. They said a shoulder injury and then maybe a, a slight complication, but that's all it was, so I don't know what that means, really. You can see what happened. I ended up crashing my motor bicycle. Yeah, I crashed, but, you know, how many people crash around here and don't get away with it is um, it's a big thing. So I'm, I'm quite happy that we're here to tell the tale, really, especially where we came off and how fast the speed we came off. So, yeah, this is the result of um, going too fast on a superbike. It's a big test round here. Um, I, I don't know what's going on, but 
you know, I hope he's all right, you know, and hope he gets back to full fitness soon. I'm off to go see him in hospital tomorrow. Hopefully he's uh, in a fit state and not got too many painkillers, making him any stupider than what he already is. He was just at a point where he, you know, it, it's vulnerable and it, it caught him. You know, he went in a bit fast and lost it, but when he comes back, he'll learn from that. <laughs> you know, it was a mistake and uh, we can sit down around the table and discuss it and make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, this is uh, where, the, where the back end of the bike broke away and uh, where the bike ran off the road. I was doing over 128 mile an hour lap from a standing start. Having never travelled at that speed, things change, especially around here, lines change, and that's just knowledge. Really, the penalty is bigger than the crime because he made a small mistake or something happened, uh, and there's no big acres and acres of runoff area like there is in Grand Prix and gravel traps and things like that. There is nothing more shocking than actually seeing one of these guys come no. off. Well, the bike went 40 yards and Simon went 40, 40, yards, 40 yeah. yards at least, at least that probably 30 yards through the air. The bike flew up the bank nowhere near and stopped short of uh, the spectators that were up on the bank there. The bike landed about 20 feet just below them, so they decided to write a letter about it. We just waited an hour and a half to eat our egg mayonnaise sandwiches after we watched you crash. So thanks for that. I'm awfully sorry to cause such an inconvenience to your lunchtime schedule. I would have preferred staying on. Done that many laps around here, I've got got the idea of what what to expect where he, they, they don't you know they don't and you know I just wish I could stick my head on his shoulders and on his body well I suppose his body's a bit average now but everything was fine I just literally rolled in slightly too fast and slightly too wide so next year I'll go faster and I'll just go tighter I know what to do Next time on TT Legends, we're back in the Isle of Man. Can the King of the Mountain do it again? Or will the canny Aussie grab the glory?